talk uh, go on with um, web RTC. This is uh, Moro Pompilio and he will speak about uh, Vemux. Moro is a full stack developer, he likes uh, Ruby, he likes uh, Nodes, he lives at uh, London and uh, let's applaud him for his talk. Hello everyone. Uh, this talk is, is very related to the previous one actually. It's a web RTC a project I've been working on uh, lately, but it's in a much smaller scale. It's just me working on this. Um, as he said, my name is Mauro. You can find me on uh, Twitter there. And uh, Vmax is a project I started like a few months ago to basically reproduce the functionality you get, you have now uh, in Skype, but using WebRTC technology, so you can have like. Uh, chat and video Skype, uh, video call uh, in the browser, but without uh, using any plugins or flash or the need to install anything else. And it's also uh, being built on top of WebRTC, it's peer to peer and it's encrypted and secure. So I'm going to go about uh, WebRTC a little and explain how it works. So I have I seen that there's a lot of people that are aware of WebRTC, right? Can you raise your hands? So. Okay, I'm going to give a brief introduction about how it works uh, and then explain a bit how uh, Vmax handles all this, all the WebRTC stuff. So, it's a, WebRTC is like a really, really exciting project uh, that's been going on for like a year, maybe a bit more than a year. And it's basically a, it's a set of uh, JavaScript APIs. Uh, I'm going to go back. It's a set of JavaScript APIs that enable you to access a input output on your on your uh, laptop or in your system without uh, doing just anything else. If you think about our products that already exist, like Skype or Google Hangouts or like any other proprietary system, you are usually it's really hard to integrate with other other stuff. Uh, sometimes you have to install like in, Skype, in the case of Skype, you have to install applications. You need plugins for um, Google Hangouts, etc. And uh, the advantage of deploying something that, that runs on WebRTC is that it's, it's almost everywhere. You don't need to uh, be aware of like building your application for multiple systems uh, because it basically runs on the browser and the browser takes care of it. Basically, it's a like very big ab uh, abstraction layer on, on top of that. And it's been, a, it's been advancing really fast in the last few months. So you now you have WebRTC that ships on Chrome on Firefox, uh, on Chrome for Android, on Firefox for Android, uh, Opera, and then you have also like uh, bindings, native bindings. If you want to do something like it's a WebRTC client that runs on your uh, like Android app, uh, so it's like almost everywhere. It's quite ubiquitous. And then this is what it does basically: it's a set of JavaScript APIs that give you access to input devices in your uh, system. So, like say the laptop, the um, camera and the microphone. Then there's another set of APIs that allow you to communicate with a remote peer directly from your browser. And you can send arbitrary data with using a different one. This is abstracted in these three uh, APIs, basically. The media stream, which is for audio and video, uh, the RTC peer connection, and the data channel. The media stream is just is called, you see here, it's called actually get user media. And what it gives you is a, a synchronized audio and video output. And you can, when you instantiate this, you, when you call the navigator to get user media, what you get back is a media stream of your camera and your um, microphone synchronized. Um, you can also pass constraints, like you can pass the resolution you want, if you want multiple resolutions, if you want, if you want like a, well, this is abstract, actually. If you're in a mobile phone, you can choose what camera you want to use, etc. Uh, the RTC peer connection is, is, is kind of like the main component on, the, on, the, on WebRTC, and it abstracts you from a lot of other stuff. Uh, so it does all the signal processing for you, uh, does all the encoding for video uh, uh, and audio. The codecs that you use are royalty-free and open source, like Google bought the company that used to do VPA and then they, they released it openly. And 
have the security, so each with the communication between the, each pair is, is uh, encrypted. They exchange uh, fingerprints when you do the signaling, and I'm going to talk about that in a minute. And bandwidth, bandwidth management. Uh, this is basically how it looks like. It's like very, very simple. When you, you have basically callbacks where you can say when when you get a remote stream that is a video or audio, and then you can do something with it, like attach it to like a video element on your page or the same thing with your local stream, and then you can create offers to offer your like the, the local descriptions you have to someone else. And then you have RTC data channel that once you have established this connection between your, the two browsers or the two peers, uh, you can send, you can create this data channel that is to send just arbitrary data. And it's kind of, the interface is the same as the WebSocket interface, so you can just send messages, uh, anything you want. It's encrypted with DTLS, uh, and you can choose if it's reliable or unreliable. That means it's kind of like TCP or UDP. You choose if you want like every message, or you can like just deal with discarding a few of them. Um, so the signaling, you when you the, the way to establish the communication between the two peers, you need a way to for them to discover each other. Uh, that is called signaling in the WebRTC uh, world, and basically the two browsers will talk to some like central server that will help them discover each other. And I didn't say that actually the signaling is is completely uh, abstract in the the way you can exchange them. So you can use any method you want. This this cloud here basically represents you your signaling system. It can be uh, in the case of Vmax, I use WebSockets, and then both partners connect to the same. Uh, server to exchange the, the signaling, but you can use. Uh, I think the GC guys so use XMPP, and then you can just like there's a lot of other, any transport really. Uh, they will exchange the session descriptions, basically through the uh, through a signaling server, and then they will establish the peer-to-peer -peer connection between them. Uh, there's a the thing is that you, you, still, you already have a way to discover this, the two peers, but you probably need to go behind through NAT or probably behind NAT because you'll be like in a private network or something. So this, this IC, which is a component also of the a part of WebRTC, and basically the two servers discover each other uh, using the STUN protocol, which helps them, they basically, in the session description, there's information about uh, the, the standard address about how they can traverse the NAT from one side to the other. And if that fails, then they, you can have an optional uh, relay server that is, has to be public, so both partners have to be able to reach it, and then they can like, basically share, uh, relay all the, package, uh, all the packages between them using the relay server. So what it looks, this is like, a traditional, this is how it would work if, you, if the NAT traversal works. They basically do the signaling and then they just connect through the NAT uh, each other. And if you can't connect through the NAT, then what they will do is send all the, package, all the packages through the, the turn server. Uh, as I said, like, by default, WebRTC, every, everything you send through, the, through this like, peer to peer channel. It's encrypted. Uh, it uses SRTP for the video and audio, and then DTLS for for the data. And you also like you have to make sure the signaling uh, is being done through a secure channel as well, uh, and that way you're like almost covered. So I'm going to show you quickly how Vmax works. This is Vmax uh, deployed. So you can log in with your Twitter account or as a guest. Basically, it's just like you don't need an account. You just put a name. Um, I'm connected, so I'm trying and logging in with a account. And I will try to call Barish with his up there. I'll show you if. Oh, well, I can call him. Are you there? <coughs> oh, wait. Call Barish. So there it is. That's very uh, him, him on the back. So you have the, this has like a present system that works through the WebRTC, so through the WebSocket server. This is server side, uh, and then once they establish the connection, they chat 
and the video stream are actually peer to peer from browser to browser. They don't, they don't go through the, through the server. Uh, and then you can also do like join, join rooms. And this is kind of like the conferencing uh, system GTC showed, but in a much more, in a much simpler way. Uh, nice. So basically, uh, here everyone is connected to each other. Nice. So uh, each, each, each of the participants is connected to each other. There's no central server that is actually relaying everything. The problem with this is that if many people join this, you'll probably crash. There's actually no limitation right now, but you can probably handle like eight participants, no more than that. Uh, I'm going to leave the room. So you can find it, this is the URL, so you can go and try it like now. Um, uh, the code is also, there's a, there's a link at the bottom of the page with the GitHub URL if you want to check it out. And this is a stack that Vmax is built on top. Uh, it's a socket stream, which is an old uh, uh, framework that allows you to do publish, describe, pa message passing, etc. Uh, and the front end, the, the back end is like really, really small because the only thing it does is just message passing between the, the WebSocket clients. Everything else is built on, uh, on the client side and is built on top of Backbone. Uh, it's written on CoffeeScript. The authentication, I, I chose Twitter because I use it all the time, but actually it's the base, it uses every auth, which is a node a project that is like pluggable authentication, so you can use any, anything you want really. And if you want to start uh, with Word C or try it and start building stuff, there's like really interesting projects. There's a main reference app from Google, which is AppRTC. Uh, and they have this really useful adapter JS, which is just a, it's a polyfill for like, because some of the APIs are actually namespaced with the like Mozilla, Moz, RTC, uh, et cetera, or WebKit. And with adapter JS, you have like a concise uh, way to use it. And the, Google also has like a stand server that you can use. You don't have to deploy like your own. You can use basically a public stand server they, they have available. Uh, they don't have any relay server, but it's good. Uh, if you want to do some debugging, this in Chrome comes with WebRTC internals, which is uh, built into the browser, and you, the, it will help you debug uh, everything related with WebRTC very detailed information about like the connection, etc. And then there are some really cool libraries. You will probably know a few of them. Uh, simple word C is from the guy from Tolkien.io. And it's like really, really nice library if you want to start building something on top of uh, word C that's like video base. There's a few links. Uh, Sharefest is, is basically to share files because you can just establish the data channel without the video and audio stream, so you can use it to share files peer-to-peer -peer in the browser, so you can just like drag and drop a file into your browser and it will be sent to the remote peer. And obviously there are a few resources. I will publish the links, uh, the links to the slides afterwards. That's it. Questions? So we have time for some questions. Uh, I see a question at the front. What you did is, uh, does it work out of the box if I download the code? Uh, yeah, I you can, can try it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You can clone it from GitHub and then just npm start and it will run. Oh, he was asking if, if uh, what I showed it showed runs locally. Yeah, you, you, can, you go for, to GitHub, you clone it, and then you, the only thing you need is a working node stack, mm -hmm. having node in your laptop. And then you just install the dependencies when npm install, and npm start, and you have like the same thing running locally. It's super easy to deploy as well. The only dependency you have is Redis, uh, which is the key value store. It's available like everywhere. So that's the only dependency, really. We have another question at the rear. Thank you. Uh, how do you manage the overeating when you have uh, more than two or three peers? Because it seems to be the, the general problems when you uh, encode and decode video between peers and everybody has to make this uh, CPU-intensive operation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
I'm not, I'm not handling that at all in the application. Basically, what you, what you saw on the, on the video, on the like, conference system, uh, is not handling that at all. It's just basically connecting each peer with each other, and it's not limited. So if you have a fairly powerful laptop, it will work fine. If you are like in an old laptop, it will probably have some problems. I do have a crappy laptop, and I couldn't go further than four people. Otherwise, I was burned everywhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You you would have to use something like the GC probably where you are just connecting with just one partner that is actually broadcasting to everyone else. There are like also commercial solutions, but the GC one is, looks awesome. So. Uh, we have a question. Uh, hi. Uh, what about SET RTP, the new standard? Uh, Sorry, do what? you support SET RTP? Not S, but SET. Uh, that's set. part of the WebRTC uh, standard. Right now, the, uh, the configuration is not specifying anything, so it's in the default one. Mm -hmm. But probably it would be just like because with, changing that with one. With S RTP, you have to entertain the, the keys, the public key. Yeah. Yeah. And, and with set, uh, they are auto generated each session, so it's, it is more secure. Right. I didn't check it, but I will take a look and probably I just it's use that. The, th yeah. the Thimmerman, the creator of uh, PGP, is the one that did this. Right. New it is that available also on, like, on Chrome one? Sorry? It's available already on Chrome and Firefox. So. I don't know if it's included in WebRTC, so. Right. Okay, we'll so take the a question look. was. Uh, <laughs> no, I don't know. I don't know, really. Okay. Okay, thanks. Thank you for your talk.